is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're counting down our top 10 Lord of the Rings games. Now, Lord of the Rings is a novel by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, it is a very popular film, which went on to be a so-so animated movie, and then eventually a very popular film series. And there have been a couple of board games. Not a lot, but a couple. Enough to make a top 10s list. Um, so I thought I'd give you my top 10 list of Lord of the Rings games. So these are my favorite Lord of the Rings games in order. Now I want to point out that if there, I looked and there is no Hero Clicks Lord of the Rings figure. So for those of you who like Hero Clicks, um, I know there's one for The Hobbit, but we're not covering The Hobbit, just the Lord of the Rings. If there is one, that's great but I couldn't find it and I was looking around board I was looking all over board game geek for that so if it's not on that list um, I do apologize but without further ado here we go okay so number 10 I'm gonna start with something really basic and really really dumb the Lord of the Rings Monopoly the reason why this is the lowest game, the lowest of the low on my list is because it's Monopoly. There is nothing unique about this game whatsoever. It's the fact that it's just the Lord of the Rings. That's about it. Um, you know, it's Monopoly. You walk around the board. You, you collect little properties or whatever. You, you tax. I mean, you don't even get to kill your neighbor or something like that for that because it's Lord of the Rings. You think there would be a little more violence, but no, it's just Monopoly that happens to have Lord of the Rings characters in it, which is dumb. Very dumb. So that's why it's on my number 10 for the list. All right, my number nine is the Lord of the Rings Risk. Now, this one is above the Lord of the Rings Monopoly, because yes, it's Risk, and Risk and Monopoly both have that same problem of just creating different stuff. However, I've actually, I've played the Lord of the Rings Risk. I own it. Um, and it was not just Risk with Lord of the Rings skin. You could team up with people who are the same faction as you. Um, and you can team up any time in the game, which is a pain in the butt, but you know, that's a unique thing for Risk because I don't really know. I played the re original version of Risk and I don't really remember you being able to team up. So that's an actual unique thing um, for that to happen. And yeah. Okay, so we're at number eight. My number eight is The Lord of the Rings. That's it. It's just the Lord of the Rings. It's not the Lord of the Rings board game, the Lord of the Rings this, the Lord of the Rings that. It's just called the Lord of the Rings. Um, I played this once probably a long time ago, so I, the rules are very vague to me. Um, but the reason why this one is lower on my list is because, it's not because of the rules. It's mostly because of the design. It is boring. It's pretty boring. Um, it's just little colored miniature, plastic miniature figures. It's a board in a circle, um, pretty boring, pretty pretty dull. There, you know, there's really and like on the board, there's like a couple locations that you know you have the Shire or something like that. It's like the most base location. So even if you're not a big Lord of the Rings fan, you you kind of would recognize some of the stuff that they have on the board. I don't know. I think as far as board games go, I mean, even for something that old, um, not good, not good. And that's why it's on that portion of the list. Okay, so the number seven is the Lord of the Rings trading card game. Now, I love this game. It was amazing when it was in its prime. Um, you could build decks based off of all the characters you saw in the movies. Um, they had like they literally took just scenes from the movies and pl slapped them on a card. It was really good and the rules were very well thought out. Um, there was one thing that I always had an issue with this game though, but in no circumstances does it hurt it. It's they eventually included horses into the game and when the major rule for the horses were when someone attacked 
and, a, and an opponent that was on a horse, they'd take a damage. Well, as time moved on, they added more and more horses, and those horses never really kept that ability, which I was like, wait, that's, no, you should have them all do that. But, but other than that, you know, you don't actually have to have those in your deck. That's one of the best things about that. But you had a 60 card deck, 30 um, fellowship, free peoples is what they called it, 30 free people cards, and 30 shadow cards, and you can pick allies from all sorts of stuff and even for those of you people who were upset about him being cut out of the movie yes even tom bombadil is in this game so if you were upset about that you would like to you would have liked this game mostly you can only get this it has been discontinued because you know it's based off of the movie there's only so much you can do but you can get some of these cards on there's certain fan websites and also ebay as well is a good source if so if you want to try that out Check it out on eBay. Okay, so my number six is the Lord of the Rings Tradable Miniatures. Now, this is another extinct game, but it was still good in its day. Um, it was still very good in this day. This one, unlike the trading card game, I don't think it's going that strong. I believe you can get it off. You can get some figures here and there off of, uh, you know, Troll and Toad. Uh, may, maybe cool stuff might have something. eBay definitely would have something, but nowadays these miniatures are just used for, you know, decorating your office space. I, uh, you can't see it, but above me I have one of my miniatures. It is the Balrog. Um, I should actually just... Got him right here. It's full scale. Uh, well, it's not full scale, but I like the detail of these. They had really good detail. And you could mix and match all you want. It was kind of like Lord of the Rings Heroescape a little bit. Um, but, you know, the popularity wasn't there. So that's what killed that one. And it's really sad because it was very unique for a miniatures game. Usually a lot of miniatures games uh, didn't do that a lot. So I was really happy about that. But that, was, that would be my number six. Okay, so for num my number five, um, now, so these, I want to explain a little bit about them before I go into, officially go into my number five. So these are games that not only I think are good, but you can also get most of these games. So trading card game and the tradable miniatures are great games, but the reason why they're not lower on this list, more further, closer to like number one, is because you can't get them anymore. And I don't want to tease you guys about, oh, this is a great game but you can't get it anymore. So the Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit is on my number five because I liked it. Um, it really made you think about how much do you, I mean, cause I love trivia games um, because it really makes you think how much do you, not do you know it, but do you pay attention? Because the Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit especially really quizzes you on how much have you paid attention to these movies. And, uh, you know, it was really difficult. My dad is like the undefended, unbeaten champion, you know. He's never lost against anybody in Trivial Pursuit for the Lord of the Rings because he's just like the king of all things Tolkien, in my opinion. Um, and, uh, but that's my number five. I do like it. You get your own little ring uh, for as one of the markers. And then for the characters, you had like Aragorn, you had Frodo, and they were like little metal figures that were really pretty well detailed for what they were. Um, it was really, really nice. And that was just the deluxe edition. Even if you got the normal edition, it was still very beautiful. Um, like definitely de they understood what they should make their board look like in as far as theme goes, but it's trivial pursuit. So it's going to look the same thing, the, the, the colored ring, and then you got the little things all going into the center. So, you know, but that is my number five. Okay, so my number four is a game called Journey to Mordor. It is a roll and write game. Uh, that's why it's my number four. Um, it was really fun. I played this at a game night one time at my library. It was really fun. Uh, you get to take on the role of the four hobbits, and then you uh, and then you just like mark your progress along this little sheet of paper. It's like this little square piece of paper, not that not that bigger than a sticky note. Um, and the first one to get to Mordor wins. 
and but if there's a tie, then the fir then the person who got bugged by the uh, Nazgul the least is the winner. And so I almost won, but then like I I was like this close, and then I uh, it, everything just blew up in my face. But it's it's really fun. It's pretty basic. Um, so I would say if you're new to Lord of the Rings and if you're new to board games, check that game out because it is really fun. It's by uh, I believe it's by Fantasy Flight, but I could be mistaken. Okay, so my number three is The Quest to Mount Doom. Uh, this game was pretty fun from what I remembered it. It was a long, long time ago I played this game, so my, you know, my brain is like very foggy on the rules. But I think it was pretty standard. You just had to get to Mount Doom. Uh, the figures were very well done. They were metal, uh, which was very rare at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, I had fun with it when I first played it. And it was really enjoyable to to play that game and uh you know i hope i get the chance to play it again i don't ever see me buying it but um yeah it was it was really fun just be and the only reason is not because it's a bad game it's just because i don't want to be that guy who has like a whole shelf of lord of the rings games and i don't say i am not that it's nothing wrong with that but you know when you have a youtube channel you want to try to show that you have some variety and not like favoritism but that is my number three. Okay, so my number two is the Lord of the Rings living card game. This one is by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, this is a game where you get uh, separate different types of decks, or you can combine them. But it is leadership, tactics, lore, and spirit and you can each one each faction has like different abilities that can help you out through this you have different quests this one the reason why this one's higher than the trading card game is because number one you can still get it number two the the stuff that's in this game is based off of not just the books by tolkien not just by the movies but by like the notes and everything so i feel like if you really like lord of the rings this is definitely one game you need to check out because it's got so many different stories you got chapter packs that give you a bunch of different stories they give you all the card this is a living card game so you buy this core set you're set if you buy an expansion you're set no one's going to have an advantage over you at all because it's a living card game. Uh, you will all get the same stuff. So it's also got that too. But the artwork on the cards is amazing. Um, the gameplay is amazing. The theme is amazing. Everything about that I think is amazing. And which can o you can only imagine how I think about number one. Okay, my number one it is the Lord of the Rings. Journeys in Middle Earth. This game is also by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, my dad pre ordered this game. He thought it was so cool. He pre ordered this game the instant he found out about it. We played it uh, together, just me and him, and then we played one with Jordan. And I'm going to have to say, this is one of my favorite role playing games I've ever played. Um, one of the things is, because it's by Fantasy Flight, it's playing with the Fantasy Flight. Um, statistics and everything which means instead of having some guy sitting with a book or a big screen in front of them rolling dice telling you what to do no offense to Dungeons and Dragons players I play Dungeons and Dragons too but I've always felt when I played that game I felt you know if you were the dungeon master how does that person feel unless they like it but Games like this eliminate the Dungeon Master. You have a computer doing all that stuff for you. So you say, I'm going to do this. And then you hit that button and say how, what your result was. And then they tell you what would happen. It's really cool. I played it with Mansions of Madness at Gen Con one time. And I played it and I have it with this. I love that system. Um, just because we're kind of like those people who we don't want to be stuck with being that guy. But... We, but my dad usually will volunteer, and I always felt sorry for my dad that he didn't get to enjoy a game that he took the time to teaching me. And so now I'm like happy that thanks to this um, this system, uh, you everybody gets to enjoy it. There's not that one person out, and uh, I hope uh, one day, maybe 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons could adapt this. But I think the reason why they are not doing it is because it takes away the creativity of the person who is the dungeon master because that um, is created through your own imagination. Um, not that this was created by somebody else's imagination. Um, which, I mean, you could argue that's how Dungeons and Dragons is played. You know, you're, I'm not playing this, the scenario that I'm playing, I'm, I'm a elf sorcerer. I'm not playing the scenario that, uh, I dreamt up. I'm playing the scenario that somebody else dreamt up. And I don't know, to each his own. I don't want to get into that debate. My number one, Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth, um, no Frodo, uh, because this is between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So if you guys like playing as Frodo, I mean, maybe at some point there's going to be an expansion uh, where it will have that character. But until then, you're just going to have to be patient. So that is my number one. Well, there you go. There's my top ten list. I do want to like give a little bit of a an apology to some people um, about my little D&D rant. It's not that I hate that game. It's just... Um, that's my feelings about the new automation thing. If you guys have a different opinion about that, though, please put that down in the comments below. If you disagree with me about that, put it down in the comments below. Let me hear your, your thoughts. If there's anything that you disagree with my list, like what's your order that you wanted to put that in? There were a couple other games that I left out, too. Um, put that down in the comments below. What was your favorite that I uh, picked out of that? You can put that down in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified when we release new top tens lists like this. Uh, be on the lookout for our next top ten list where Jordan will tell you her top ten favorite Harry Potter games. But until then, thanks for the views. Mm -hmm.